I struggled with this major depression and I went into a clinical depression and um, stepped out to get some help. So every morning I took my breakfast in my hand, a handful of pills, and then I ate my breakfast. And I lived like that for probably two years. Um, after getting a lot of therapy and a lot of help, um, I was able to cut back on how much medication I took, but I still had to take medication for it. And um, so I was managing my depression and I was living, but I wasn't thriving. Um, and as life went on, I was able to finally get off all of the medicine, but anytime anything would happen, um, I'd, I'd hit that wall again. And I, you know, I was aware of my body and aware of who I was enough, and I'd go back and I'd have to get back on medicine for a while to get me past just the life struggles and the trauma that, that brought on depression. Um, and in the meantime, you know, here at Northlands, we were learning about grace and um, how much God loved us. and learning about uh, what we've called here the upstairs narrative and the downstairs narrative, where the upstairs narrative is the truth of what God believes for us, and the downstairs narrative is um, the reality of what's just going on in life. And um, I realized that uh, that's not the same thing. Um, what God wants for us and the truth of things is not necessarily how we're living today. And as I learned that, I learned that my circumstances didn't dictate how much God loved me and how much He cared about me. When I realized that, I, when things would happen, instead of automatically sinking into a depression and thinking that God didn't care about me, I learned to look forward and look up to God and say, okay, you love me and this isn't the truth for what you want for my life, so I can't wait to see what you're going to do in this situation. And being able to do that was an amazing freedom for me that um, I didn't have to worry about anything anymore. So today, you know, fast forward a couple of years, I don't just manage my depression. I don't have it at all. I just, in the secret places as God worked and healed me, I didn't even realize it was happening. But I never have to worry about depression anymore. It's just gone. When things happen, I know that He's got me no matter what. The Word says, speak those things as, uh, that are not as, as though they are, so that they will come to pass. And that's kind of where it is, you know. This isn't what God wants for me, so I'm going to speak the truth of what God says about me and what He believes about me, so that it will happen in life. And so, I challenge you to speak those things. You are, you are loved and you're adored and you're precious to God. And you need to lean into that and understand that wholeheartedly he wants to heal you and he wants to bring you hope and sometimes it doesn't happen overnight and in a long battle it doesn't feel like it's ever going to happen but stay strong stay strong stay faithful he will step in and intervene amen Amen. What an amazing testimony Lynette just shared. Uh, why do we share testimonies at Northlands? Well, it's very simple. Scripture teaches us that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, which we just celebrated through communion and acknowledged, but also by the word of their testimony. And we believe at Northlands that testimonies are an invitation for the Lord to do it again. Where he breaks through in one of our lives, there's an invitation for him to break through in all of our lives. We are a body after all. And so the invitation this morning is this. If you're experiencing depression, whether it be diagnosed, clinical, something that you've struggled with for 30 years, or something that you just recently experienced, the Bible says that he wants to exchange our ashes for beauty. I've come to Sunday sometime and there's been places of my life that are absolutely ashes. It's like I don't even think I can pray for a rebuild because there's nothing left to rebuild with. Just absolute ashes. That's okay. The Lord promises to turn our ashes into beauty. There's also a promise to turn our grief, our mourning, into gladness. And there's also a promise that to take the spirit of heaviness off of us and he covers us with a garment of praise as an exchange. 
So I'm going to ask you to stand if you have a spirit of heaviness or there's any area of your life right now where there's some type of hopelessness. And why am I asking you to stand? Well, first of all, it's an act of faith. For me, I resonate with Lynette's story. I get really excited when we sing about coming out of the grave because the grave for me was anxiety and depression. And I'm not in that grave anymore and I'm not going back. So there's an excitement for me because I've experienced freedom just like Lynette in this area. And there's a lie from the enemy, especially for those of us that have struggled with this for a long time that there's a permanency to this in our lives. Well, it's been 30 years, so I can't imagine it changing now. The good news is, is that what the enemy has spent years building, Jesus can tear down in an instant because he's already taken it down on the cross. Jesus himself experienced our despair on the cross and he dealt with it and defeated it. So there's no more permanency left for us to partake of because it's already been dealt with and defeated. So I'm gonna ask you to stand if there's any area of your life where you want oil of gladness, where you want beauty, where you need that garment of praise, go ahead and stand right now. This is nothing to be ashamed of at all. Just like physical sickness, the Lord made our bodies, he made our minds, he made our hearts. And when there's any type of sickness, whether it's in our minds, our bodies, and our hearts, he promises wholeness. And we're standing with those right now. If you're nearby, anyone standing, if you don't mind just gently putting a hand on them and standing with them in agreement, we're not alone in this. Jesus is with us, but we're also with each other in this. So I'm gonna pray right now. And if you're watching online and this resonates with you today, I want you to just in your heart say, yes, that's me. I wanna receive this breakthrough right now. Jesus, we thank you for the power of the cross, for the finality of the cross. You said it is finished. So depression and anxiety and grief and hopelessness, it is finished in our lives right now. And Father, we ask that you replace that with the oil of gladness that you promise, with the beauty, Father God, that you promised, that you would intervene in our lives and take away that spirit of heaviness and deal with it once and for all, and instead you would cover us with the garment of praise. This week, I pray that our declarations would change, that the lies would no longer be spoken, but only true over our lives, that we can stand in boldness and say, I am no longer afraid because the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me and his permanency of truth and peace and joy reign over our lives. We thank you for all these things and by the authority that Jesus gave us on the cross, we say yes and amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, church. Thank you so much.